In this video, we're going to talk about the details of fine tuning large language models. In the previous videos, we discussed about how large language models work, like ChatGPT or Llama 2, and then how they're pre trained, the process, uh, all the equipment that's used to gather data from the internet and create a base model. So now that we have this base model that we're pre trained on these vast amounts of topics from all these random sources from the internet, at this point, the LLMs fully understand how language works. So now how do we turn this into an assistant model where we ask it questions about specific topics and it gives us proper responses? basically like what ChatGPT is today. Because in the pre-trained model, this base model that we refer to, is still not very useful since it only understands how language works, but can't really answer questions properly. That's where fine tuning comes in. So fine tuning large language models like ChatGPT or Llama 2 involves taking this pre-trained model that we created and then teaching it more about a specific topic or style of communication. This is done by feeding it a small, specialized data set that reflects the kind of information or conversational tone we want it to mimic. Think of it as giving the model a mini course on a particular subject or style, helping it become more expert in that area, which allows it to generate more accurate and relevant responses for specific tasks or industry. Let's compare the overall concept of pre-training and fine-tuning large language models like ChatGPT to learning a new language, which is something we can all relate to. First, let's look at a pre-training, which we walked through in the previous videos. Think of pre-training as immersing yourself in a new language. So let's imagine you've decided to learn French. You start by immersing yourself in language as broadly as possible. This means listening to French music, watching French movies, reading French books, and etc. This stage is similar to pre-training phase for an LLM, right? Just as you're absorbing French from various sources without really focusing too much on any specific topic, pre-training involves exposing the large language model to a vast array of text from the internet. This broad exposure helps the model or you, the language learner, let's say, to grasp the fundamentals of the language, like the grammar, the common vocabulary, and the structure of how sentences are formed. It's about building a general understanding and the ability to comprehend and generate the language in a wide variety of contexts. So fine tuning is basically specializing in a specific aspect of the language. Going back to the example, so now after months of broad learning, you decide you want to use your French for a specific purpose. Let's say you want to be able to discuss French cuisine because you plan to write a blog about it or want to work in a French restaurant. This is where fine tuning comes in. To fine tune your French for this specific purpose, you might start by reading French cookbooks, watching cooking shows in French, and practicing speaking about cooking with French speaking friends or tutors. You focus on learning vocabulary and phrases particularly relevant to cooking and food. This specialized practice helps you become more proficient in discussing French cuisine specifically, even though you still have the general ability to speak French in other contexts. Similarly, in the fine tuning phase for a large language model, the model is trained on a specific data set that's relevant to the specific tasks or domain it needs to to perform well in. For example, if the model is being fine-tuned to provide medical advice, it would be trained on medical textbooks, patient's consultations, and other relevant medical texts. This helps the model to become more adept at understanding and generating text related to the medical field, improving its performance for those specific types of queries. In both examples, the broad foundation knowledge acquired during the pre-training phase is crucial for overall competency. However, it's focus practice or fine tuning in a specific domain that enables the learner or the large language model to excel in particular areas, making them more effective and efficient for specific tasks or conversations. So now let's take a look at how Llama 2 was fine tuned. Because Llama 2 is open source, we know quite a lot about the structure of how it was fine tuned. So let's take a look at the technical documentation real quickly. So if we head over to llama.meta.com and click on Llama 2, we're going to be brought to this main page. And if we scroll down in the technical specifications, we can click on read the paper. And this is going to take us to um, the paper where you can download it. And when you click on download, you're brought to this page. And I'm going to scroll down and zoom in a little bit. Scroll down to let's see where the page was. Fine tuning starts at page eight. All right. Let me scroll down to page eight real quick. All right. Fine tuning right here. So this gives you all of the really great details on what kind of a techniques were used. Um, but 
in order to avoid wasting too much time to go through the details, I'm not going to bore you with the numbers. Um, so I'm just going to kind of summarize this whole process and the techniques that were used. So fine tuning Lama 2 is actually, it was a very complicated process. Um, the process, you can think of it as three main techniques or three main topics. First is supervised fine tuning. And that's basically the first stage of um, the technical documentation that goes through all the details. But essentially, this stage is crucial for bootstrapping the model's ability to respond accurately and relevantly to a wide variety of prompts. By carefully selecting and using high quality data, the team in Lama 2 ensured that models responses are not only correct, but also contextually appropriate, making the model more reliable and versatile in dialogue scenarios. Imagine teaching a new employee to respond to customer queries by showing them examples of excellent customer service interactions. And that's exactly what the Llama team did, right? And then a second important um, major step is called reinforcing learning with human feedback or RLHF for short. And if we scroll down, this is the second main topic right here, the section 3.2. So this process basically involved refining the model's behavior by incorporating human judgments about the model's outputs. So for example, consider um, how a mentor provides feedback to guide improvement. This model was advanced by integrating judgments from real life people, aiming to tailor its responses to both helpful and safe much like ensuring, for example, a customer service representative knows what makes an interaction both useful and respectful when they're interacting with their customers. So that's what basically in this step, this uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback does to the model. It gives it a more um, nuanced understanding of how to properly respond and be useful and respectful when it comes to that interaction. All right, and then the third one was iterative fine tuning and reward modeling. And if we scroll down, this is, there you go, it's called 3.23, that's where that uh, section starts. But the iterative fine tuning and reward modeling, so through basically through repeated cycles of feedback and adjustment by um, the human team, the model was progressively honed to better meet human stand. Um, basically going back to the real life example, it's like a chef tasting and adjusting a recipe repeatedly uh, until it meets that certain requirement of standard. Okay, so now that we understand kind of the base um, basics of how fine tuning works, let's dive deeper into how fine tuning works on the neural network level, right? So let's talk about the adjustments. So as we mentioned before, fine tuning involves further training the model on a small, more specialized data set that reflects the specific tasks or domain knowledge it needs to improve upon. The key here is that we don't really start um, learning from scratch. Instead, we start with that pre-training weight or biases in our initial step. Again, I always like to give real life examples so that we understand better. So let's say, imagine you're learning to cook by following recipes from a cookbook. Each recipe suggests how each ingredient to use for the dish, right? So in this analogy, the weights that we refer to are like the recommendation for how much of each ingredient you should use in this recipe. Just as adding the right amount of salt or pepper can make a big difference in how the food tastes, in a neural network, the weights determine how much importance or influence one piece of information or an ingredient should have on the outcome of the response. On our example, the final dish. So going back to the example, when you start first cooking, you might follow the cookbook's recommendations exactly as it is. But as you get more experience, you start to tweak the amounts based on your taste or the preferences of the people you're cooking for. Maybe you learn that adding a bit more garlic and a little less salt than the recipe suggests works better for you and your friends. So translating this back to the world of neural networks and language models, the cooking is like the model processing information and the tweaking of these ingredient amounts is like adjusting the weights during the training process. The model starts with some initial recipe or the pre-training on wide variety of information. Then when it needs to get better at specific tasks, like making a particular type of cuisine, let's say it goes through a process of fine tuning where it adjusts the amounts or the weights based on a new set of recipe or specialized data set that we talked about. So this helps the model to perform better better on these specific tasks, much like adjusting the recipe helps you to cook a dish better suits that better suits your taste and your audiences. So let's take a look at the process of fine tuning and what it involves. So there's basically two options. One, a company could do it in house or they can hire uh, a third party. Let's take a look at the first option. So if a company wants to do this fine tuning process in house, uh, they would basically have to 
go through several steps. First, they have to collect data. Um, so they get, they basically gather the domain specific data sets that's relevant to the tasks and the model that this large language will perform, right? And then they have to annotate the data. So basically they can use in-house or freelance experts, human beings, they would hire them to manually label and annotate the data to guide the model's learning. They would then prepare the data by processing and preparing the annotation of data for training, ensuring that it's a format compatible with the model. Then they would have to fine tune the model. So they would use the prepared data set to fine tune the pre-trained model and they would adjust the parameters as needed based on performance. And then again, they would basically at the last step, they will evaluate and repeat this process of iteration. So they would continuously evaluate the model's performance on um, test data and iterate on fine tuning process to enhance the accuracy and reliability over and over again. So they basically can keep repeating this step to make sure um, that they meet the standard that they're looking for when it comes to this data set. Or the other option is a company could hire a third party like Scale.ai. So Scale.ai assists companies in achieving the effective fine tuning of their large language models by basically providing really high quality, specialized data sets that's tailored to the company's specific needs. So this is how they do it. They basically collect and curate the data themselves. So Scale.ai, this is basically their, if we go to their website, that's one of their most um, important uh, services that they provide. And they have worked with OpenAI, Meta, Microsoft, really, um, really big companies as far as uh, curating and adjusting their data sets when it comes to these different uh, qualities. And if you come down here, you can actually see that they have they offer a lot of these options like data labeling when it comes to 3D or images or mapping or text specifically. And when it comes to large language model, obviously for text will be the important part. But as you can see the bottom here, um, as far as the amount of services they offer. So this is what we just looked at, the RLHF, which is reinforced learning human feedback. Uh, so they provide all these services so that way the company doesn't have to do it in-house because it might cost them a lot more money. All right, so we're pretty much done. Uh, so we went through the process of pre-training, we went through the process of explaining how all of this kind of fits together. And then obviously fine tuning is where now you make this a specialized, you train it on specialized data set for different industries. And that's basically the gist of how you end up with a large language model like ChatGPT. So just quickly to go over the summary. So the pre-training phase, again, like we went through the examples, you acquire, for example, 10 terabytes of text data from the internet, like in Llama 270B's example, then you would use GPU cloud clusters to compress this data, like for example, let's say 6,000 GPU clusters, um, and then you would train the neural network for several days or for, for a specific amount of time, and it would cost you a certain amount of money, and then you basically come up with this initial base model. And then the refinement phase is where you would be going through the fine tuning process. You would drive, you would draft the data labeling guidelines, whether it's done in-house or you or contract it to a company like scale.ai and they would perform all these tasks like uh, recruiting annotators or um, you know data labeling and kind of refining the initial model with different sets of data to receive an upgraded assistant model uh, which is basically what the modern day large language models like ChatGPT are. And then again, this is kind of an iterative process. So you keep observing and updating, um, and then you kind of go back to step one. If you need to further fine tune the model for a specific task, or if there's anything you see that they're doing, uh, there's a lot of errors in a particular area. So you would go back to step one and kind of refine it to make sure that it gets to a point where you're satisfied with the product. All right, so that's pretty much the end of the video series for large language models. I had a lot of fun making this. I hope it was helpful to you guys. So next I'm going to create another series that's specific about prompt engineering. We'll go through the different um, prompt engineering techniques like few shot prompting um, and zero shot prompting amongst other really uh, famous techniques when it comes to prompt engineering. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.